so good day class so this is our first lecture for the final term for building tech three so we're going to discuss a bit about the uh, doors and its accessories so for the door operation so for exterior and interior use we have swing doors so normally turns and hinges about a side jump so these are hinges here so then push or pull so that can also be pivoted from head jamming thresholds then we also have the bypass sliding doors which is also for swing interior use so slides on overhead track and long guys or a track on the floor so it's drawn in the plan like this then we have the surface sliding doors so it's for still for exterior interior use so the surface hung on an exposed overhead track that provides access to full width of the doorway so here's this is track here class at the top so when you uh, slide the door so you can fully access the opening then you have the puppet sliding door so it's good only for interior so the slides on the overhead track into and out for recess within this with the four wall so it is your wall class if you have a puppet sliding uh, door so it inserts here uh, before you can use the entire width. Okay. So always remember that it's good for interior use only. Then you have what you call the folding doors. It's also for interior use only. So it's hinged door panels, uh, fold flat against one another and open. It's used to subdivide interior uh, spaces. I think you... Um, I don't know class if you have observed function rooms. I think uh, most function rooms uh, use uh, folding doors in uh, some meeting rooms, so in hotels, restaurants. Okay, so they use these subdivide spaces. And what you call it, they have also the wood flash doors. Uh, which are, uh, wood flash doors are doors with no visible seams in both faces. So the available signs are course the common flash door then the flash door with uh, glass inserts here so it could be a square it could be a rectangle here then a flush door with louvered inset so I think this is what you commonly see in your restrooms okay, so for exterior interior use so this is the swing Uh, I think we have discussed this. Uh, this is a sliding. So we have a bypass sliding to also put the exterior and interior. Okay. And we have which we also have what's called surface sliding, which is for exterior interior use. Then you have the pocket uh, sliding. Uh, I think the pocket sliding, as we have discussed earlier, is uh, it's better for interior use. Then you have the side hinge folding. Okay, so this is a wood flush door construction. So hollow core flush doors have a framework of styles and grains, encasing an expanded honeycomb core of corrugated fiberboard or a grid of interlocking horizontal and vertical wood strips. They are lightweight and tended generally for interiors and have little inherent thermal or acoustic insulation, insulation value. Okay. So this is the hollow core flush door. So here the rail, this is what's called the style. Okay. The rail is the top portion, which is called the style. This is your hollow core type. This is a mesh wood, ladder strips, honeycomb or spiral blocks. This is your lock rail. This is your lock uh, block. This is your uh, Bandy. This is your first was banding is your face panel. Then you have the solid core flush doors. It's have a core of banded lumber blocks, particle board, or a mineral composition. So the banded lumber core is the most economical and widely used. The mineral composition core is lightest that has low screw holding strength and cutouts are difficult. So solid Core doors are used primarily as exterior doors, but they may also be used wherever it is fire resistance, sound insulation, or dimensional stability is desired. So it's still the, the rail, 
professor ay kung sa style, the following four types to depend from stained lumber, mineral composition, or particle board. Means uh, the cross banding. After that, we have the face panel. So this is a wood panel door uh, construction. So when you see a uh, wood panel door, so it's usually made of an entire uh, entire block of wood. Okay, so still, you still have a top rail. This this portion has a style. It's a flat plywood or raised wood panels with the lock rail here. This is the bottom rail. Think you're familiar already with the door height. So door heights are usually around uh, 2.1 meters for the standard. And then the door widths, it would really depend. So you have your, uh, I think, uh, you have your 0 0.8, 0 0.9, if this is for uh, the main door. And let's have the 1 meter size. Okay. Then, second, you have your steel door. So it finishes, it's, it's prime or galvanized for painting, or big enamel paint, or vinyl cladding. Or stainless steel or aluminum skin, which are available in polish or texture finish. Then for the steel door construction, so hollow metal doors have face sheets of 16 to 22 gauge steel bonded to a steel channel frame and reinforced with channels. A craft honeycomb structure, a rigid plastic foam uh, core. Then you have the steel fire doors. So fire door assemblies consisting of a fire resistant door. Door frame and hardware are required to protect openings and fire rated walls. So the maximum the um, door size is around 1.20 by uh, 3 meters. So the door frame hardware must have a five distance rating similar to that of the door. The door must be self latching and be equipped with closers. Because I think uh, you're familiar with this one in our uh, in your design subject. So these are the door hand conventions are used in specifying door hardware such as lock sets and closers. So the terms right and left assume a view from the exterior of the building or room to which the doorway leads. Okay, so this is what in this opening class is what you call a left uh, hand door. It opens inward to the left and hinges on the left. Then the right hand or RH, the door opens inward to the right and hinges on the right. Then you also have the left hand reverse, the door opens upward to the left and hinges on the left. Then you also have the right hand reverse or RHR, the door opens outward to the right and hinges on the right. Okay, so this is a common part of the door. So uh, here you have your door frame, and here's the door itself. And of course, this is the door hardware. Okay, so when you draw your uh, um, schedule of doors and windows class, so uh, in the blueprints, I think uh, these are the types that you're uh, usually you're going to draw. You have the flush. So the flush is for interior use. You have the panel, which is which are usually your main doors outside. We have the French doors, we have the glass doors, the sash, the louver for your CRs. Uh, I think uh, this kind of louver is used in uh, closets. Then you have uh, here this one uh, for your uh, toilets. And you have the screen door and the Dutch. Then these are the door types by design. So with glass inserts, the louver inserts, this is the, this is the panel doors, the different designs. Uh, but right now, class, uh, you're not only limited on the basics. You can uh, design or customize something uh, good for your house or for your client. So the opening should be less than 40% of door area and no closer than 5 inches to the edge. Then the height of the opening in hollow core doors should be less than half of the door height. This is your hollow core doors or your usual uh, flush doors so the grades and finishes it's usually hardwood veneer grades plastic or hardboard and you have your special doors also 
which are your fire rated doors, acoustic uh, sound insulating doors, and the lead lined and copper shielded doors. So, when do you use glass your lead lined and copper shielded, uh, shielded doors? I think you use this in your, for example, in x ray rooms, which so should be lead lined to prevent uh, radiation from leaking out. So, from leads and finishes, so for natural or fusing finishes, for paint finishes, all this. So in, in the actual practice class, um, you can always ask uh, your painter or the paint contractor to do a natural uh, wood finish and you're, you're, you're going to apply uh, they're going to use um, techniques to bring out the natural beauty of the wood or you can either print the uh, paint the wood uh, um, uh, using automotive paint it would really depend if you're more on the naturalistic um, side or uh, you want something that's uh, more industrial okay for its uh, finish okay so i think i discussed this uh, earlier the different types of doors So these are the different hollow metal installations. So these are the frames. The frames will be routed full with mortar or plaster as used in oil for more secure and fire resistant uh, installation. So your frame, the frames class, uh, are your metal frames, since this is hollow here, you can route it with mortar or plaster. Okay, so this is your common and glass entrance doors. Uh, there are store front entrances. So I think the height here class uh, depends around 2.1 to 2.4 meters uh, depending on the design that you're going to use. So the size and space of volumes are related to the glass thickness and the wind load on the wall plane. Then we also have what you call the revolving doors. So, revolving doors provide a continuous weather seal, eliminate drafts, and hold heating and cooling doses to a minimum while accommodating a moderate flow of traffic. Okay. So, these are the different revolving door layouts. Uh, I have here the enclosure flap by hinge doors. So, they have a revolving door here in center. Then the side light centered on uh, enclosure. Then a back of enclosure with side uh, light with me. Then enclosure projecting from side lights. Then you have enclosure set within uh, two wall planes. Then you have your enclosure set uh, back within a wall. Okay, so these are the details. So the deck includes provision for ceiling lights, maybe glazed with tempered glass. You hear the doors of tempered glass with aluminum, stainless steel, or bronze frames. You have here the enclosure be metal or glass tempered wire laminated. Then you have the line of soffit, which will be curved or straight. They have a weather seal, which is provided by rubber and felt tip sweep at door styles and stop at top and the bottom rails. So let's go to here, sliding doors. So I think uh, it's like the common designs of your sliding doors. So it means that uh, this door uh, can be slided here and this can be slided here also. So these are the common uh, details. Last. So just familiarize yourselves with the details. 
uh, if you want to study more on the details class, um, I recommend that you try to read the Francis T. Teaching books. So they are really helpful. So so the door hinges so but hinges are normally used with wood and allow hollow metal doors and frames. So they are mortised into the door edge and jammed so that only the knuckle is visible when the door is closed. So the pin in the knuckle will be removed, loose or fixed, uh, non rising or self locking pins which cannot be removed when the door is closed should also available for security. So this is a template, this is a non template for wood doors. Then you have uh, also if you call a special purpose hinges. So this is what you call the surface hinges, which is used where mortising of a door or jam is not possible. And of course you have what you call the invisible hinge. So you use this in cabinets, uh, in your kitchen, or when you have gym doors. And you also have what you call the floor hinge, which is used with mortise pivot at door head for double acting door which may be provided a closer mechanism then we have here the gravity type pivot which are used with double acting swing doors then we have here the pivot hinge which are used primarily with cabinet doors but in cabinets class in my experience usually use here the invisible hinge or hidden hinge okay so let's so this, I think, it's a concealed lock types. And last semester, I think we discussed that the mortise lock is one of the most secure types. Okay. So the concealed lock types. Uh, first, because it's concealed, it will be hard to break through. So especially when you uh, use the mortise lock in uh, wood panels. You have here the integral lock, and then you have here what you call the cylinder lock. So, three class, so this is an example of weather stripping. So, weather stripping of steel doors reduces air filtration, infiltration, and the resulting heating and cooling loss. So it can also prevent dust and wind blown rain from penetrating a building's interior. So, you use, use uh, weather stripping class, uh, its most basic uh, application, for example, is that if you have an air conditioned space, within a building and you don't want um, your air conditioning unit to perform or use uh, more energy than usual so you have to make sure that the uh, the windows and the doors are weather stripped so it means that the coldness inside will not get in and the heat from the outside also will not get in so that, that's just the uh, concept of it okay. then um, so we also have different window types by operation so i think this was once um, discussed last in no, it was not discussed. It came out in a board exam question a few years back. Okay, so for example, uh, what kind of window type allows for 100% uh, ventilation to come in? Okay, I think one of the uh, choices was the awning window. So the answer, uh, here we have the fixed. Uh, here the kismet also allows for 100% ventilation only then of course the sliding it only allows for 50 to 66 percent because when you move it here so the uh, only half goes in okay so right now class i think there's a movement um, especially in tropical countries and the use of uh to call this uh, jealousy windows so when you use jealousy windows class I think 
it also allows for 100% uh, ventilation uh, to get in but you have to really design it so that it will look uh, it will look good also uh, in your design uh, your building also look good okay so this is our, our short lecture for this week about doors and windows so if you have any uh, further questions or clarifications feel free to send a facebook message or send an email so i'll be posting our activity for building tech uh, this week in our facebook page so stay safe always class and see you next meeting